I don't have it. What, what do you have? Just, uh... All right, so this is uh, Patrick Mogensen, and he'll be telling us about redesigning Optum. Yeah, hello. Sorry about the delay. Um, yeah, my talk in, uh, is on uh, redesigning Optum um, and also related packages, LSQ Fit and NL Solve. Um, and so Optum and the related packages are quite popular, I would say, in the Julia ecosystem, based on the number of stars and repositories, um, interactions with other packages, um, and questions on discourse and issues and private questions, because surprisingly many researchers don't want to tell the world that they're stupid, apparently, or <laughs> that's their own. I mean, that's, I think that's their own feeling, but the, so they, they don't want to ask questions in public, so they send private emails, which is fine. but. Um, I don't think they should be that afraid of doing it publicly. Um, also, based on the Julia user survey, there was a question on what's your popular package, and we did quite well there. And uh, some time ago, uh, Espion Risset Nielsen and I made a, a Journal of Open Source Software entry, which has been cited a number of times, and um, more and more each month or period. So that's great. Um, this is hard to see because I could only get the screenshot from the YouTube video, but this is from the survey, and we placed 10th, which I think is nice. We're in, in between revise and forward diff, which is a pretty nice place to be. 
um, in terms of popularity. Um, so yeah, a lot of people use it, but um, it's kind of been a mess to maintain over the past two years. Um, and I've had fairly limited time to do open source software development in the last year, and almost all of that time has been maintaining weird method uh, ambiguities and stuff like that because um, of the way that Optim and NLSolve is, is designed. So that means no time to add new methods or improve the existing code and stuff like that. So I sort of had the choice to either refactor and re rework Optim as it was, or basically just say, let's start over and see if we can do better this time. Yeah. So what's good about Optim and why do I think that people use it? Well, it's, it's easy to swap out different methods. So if you have your objective function, um, it's, it's quite easy to just try out with simulated annealing, then switch to another mead, gradient descent, uh, BFTS, Newton, it will automatically um, use AD or forward diff to, uh, if you didn't provide the enough information. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite easy to use different methods. Uh, it's bang based or it's, it's in place, uh, so it's quite fast for base arrays um, and wrappers around base arrays, um, which is fine for, for mid scale size problems, um, but not for, and, and large, I guess, but not small, very small problems, uh, where some, some people, people have raised issues that they want to solve very small problems with like one or two parameters, but hundreds of times, hundreds of thousands of times or millions of times in, in, a, in a loop. Um, so, so it's good for the, the mid-size, but not for the small size. Uh, and there are out-of-place uh, versions of the, of the interface, but it basically allocates an, an array inside and then writes to that. So it's not really good for static arrays or GPU arrays and stuff like that. But it's good for normal arrays. And uh, general ease of use is that we have a, we're catching a lot of different ways of inputting your information. So you can input your function, your gradient, a uh, function that calculates the objective and gradient, the Hessian, and different options and methods and stuff like that. So that's, I think that's good for users. Um, but what's bad? What's bad is that the code is, is, is quite old, and this means that we're, we're using some, I would say, code, some code style in some places that could be better with the newer syntax and additions to the language since then. It also means that a lot of the code is written by um, a version of me that is three or four years younger and uh, <laughs> worse programmer. So I've learned a lot in the past four years about programming and Julia programming. So a lot of stuff could be better. There are no non-mutating mutating options, as I said before. So static array um, and GPU array support is non-existent, which uh, has been raised on the issue tracker a lot of times. Um, it's ease of use. as that I talked about before is based on a large number of methods to, for example, the optimize function. And that, is, that has been some of the code that's been hard to maintain. Um, so there are too many ways to uh, call optimize from the user's point of view to actually re reach the optimizing code in the, in the end. And we're using fully parametric types uh, too many places. And that's a problem because it, it it makes it hard to keep track of how you initialize different types of arrays and using AD uh, forward diff, for example, through Optim uh, doesn't really work because we're assuming some things about how arrays are initialized and what of which of the arrays that have the same L types and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of a mess. And that's some of the things that I just decided that would be too hard to refactor because all of the code depended on these types. So, yeah. Okay, so what is the solution is uh, that is a new package. So Optim and LSQFit and NLSolve, they, LSQFit and Optim were originally in the Julia Opt uh, organization, um, but there was a switch and they wanted to focus only on jump and jump directly jump supported packages and jump related packages. So Optim and LSQ fit was moved out of Julia up some years ago and, and we created the Julia NL solvers uh, organization for that. So the, ob the obvious name for the package is of course uh, NL solvers.jl. Um, and it basically takes the optimization code from LSQ fit 
um, and the nonlinear systems of nonlinear equation uh, code from NLSolve and mixes it in with the optim.jl code or the new version of that um, so we can more easily share the code uh, that is common between those, uh, those uh, use cases for optimization and, and solving systems of equation. And so one of the big problems, as I told you, was that there are too many ways to uh, call optim or optimize. And um, so I'm going to solve it by using a, a, an interface that's become quite popular, I think, in Julia, where you have your, your problem or your objective type as the first positional argument, then you have your algorithm of choice, and then perhaps some options in the end. And um, this means that I've been able to reduce the lines of code substantially. Um, so this pushes some of the logic, logic from that was in optimized before into the constructor of the problem and constructor of the algorithms, stuff like that. Yeah, so it's, it's easier to reason about and maintain. Um, there's an explicit mutating and non-mutating interface. So you can use the uh, non-mutating interface with base arrays, for example, if you want to. But you can also still use the old mutating interface where you don't reallocate arrays all the time and stuff like that. But you can also use static arrays or stuff like GPU arrays, and things will get initialized uh, correctly. Um, so why don't I just rely on static arrays? I mean, it's, it's a established package, um, and I could, but it's just very unsatisfactory. And I mean, Julia uses, they come with all weird sorts of array types all the time that they just want to pass in, and a lot of the time that's sort of a non-mutating interface where they don't want you to use set index or stuff like that. Um, so that's a simpler interface that allows you to pass in more types of arrays, I think. Yeah, and, and then for the methods where it's appropriate, there's also an iterator interface, um, which um, I think it's simpler than, than a callback interface in a lot of uh, ways. A lot of people have asked me, how can I update my sample or my mini badge between every time I get a new parameter, if they're doing something like machine learning, or how can I calculate my, um, what's it called, training error or stuff like that while I'm optimizing and one approach is to use callbacks, but I think the, if you are like an advanced user, a power user, I think the iterator interface is, is really is better in many ways. So that's possible at least for people to use. And so what's the status? Well, most of the functionality from the packages has been ported. Um, not all of NLSolve, but I've been focusing more on inexact Newton style, uh, style methods. Um, that is not in NLSolve right now, and also trust region methods in, in the option part of the code. And for stuff like uh, static arrays, if you just try two versions, one that is the in-place base array version and one place that's static array, you get orders of magnitudes of speed up. So for those who use that, I think that's pretty nice. A few lines of code, but there's still some interface issues that has to be ironed out. Yep, I'm out of time. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we have time for maybe one question. Anybody got a question? So what do you have in the way of nonlinearly constrained application problems? So what do I have in the way of nonlinear? Nonlinear constrained choices. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, yeah. Um, well, we have one thing, <laughs> the IP Newton uh, algorithm that's in there, which is for, yeah. This I mean, another bits into your interface. So you that would, okay, the yeah, that would be in the problem. In the problem specification, you would enter your box constraints or nonlinear constraints as a function or stuff like that. Yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah. So that would be in the problem. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.